Today is June 21st, 2022, and this is Sandra Lafke Carlson here in the Tualatin Heritage Center with um, Ross Baker, who is going to help me um, record an interview with Ed Casey. And um, thank you, Ed, for, for coming to, to do this for us. Um, and this, this interview will be um, in, put in the archives of the Tualatin Historical Society. So um, Ed, um, would you maybe start out by telling us where you were born and where you sure. grew up? <clears throat> okay, uh, I was born in Portland, 1945. Um, lived in West Slope, which was off of Canyon Road until I was 10 years old. Um, went to <clears throat> Country Gable uh, pre Day School, which is uh, went to Catlin Gable. Mm -hmm. After that, um, we moved to uh, Southwest Portland between Hoyt Arboretum, Washington Park, and the New Zoo. So mm -hmm. we're uh, surrounded by trees and such. I grew up there until I got married. Um, Went to grade school, St. Thomas More, um, which is up on Council Crest in Portland. Went to Jesuit High School and uh, University of Portland. I started in engineering and transferred to the School of Business and got a degree in uh, industrial management, 1969. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, well, I married uh, a beautiful young lady that I met at Portland U. Uh, we got married just after I graduated, Joanne. Um, first job, do you want me to go into? Sure. Okay, first job was with First National Bank of Oregon, which has long since been taken up by other banks. Uh, started as a management trainee, went to loan officer, credit analyst, consumer branch manager. Um, first year I was loaned out as a United Good Neighbors loaned executive. So I had to go beg for money for um, uh, United Good Neighbors for about a month and a half. That was quite something. Um, I left the bank in 1976 and jo joined Art Lutzen Company Realtors, which had a branch here in Tualatin. Uh, sold homes in Tualatin and surrounding areas. And uh, for a while, I was guaranteed sales manager, which means I had to go out and look at houses. And if we thought we could sell it, we'd give them 90 days. If we didn't sell it in 90 days, we'd buy it. <clears throat> that was worked great when the market was hot, but when it started tightening up, we, uh, um, I got out of the market. It just wasn't uh, profitable to be a realtor at the time. Was that about the time that you moved to Tualatin, um, Joanne? Well, let's see. I moved here in 1970, I believe. 70 or 71. Um, and why? Was it because of your job? <laughs> well, no. We we wanted to get a house. We've been living in apartments. And at that time, we had a baby uh, daughter. And so I was working in the First National Tower down in Portland. And I went up to the real estate division and talked to a, uh, an appraiser. And I said, well, if you were to buy a house, where would you buy it? You know, I grew up in Southwest Portland, someplace Southwest Portland. He says, Tuala. Didn't know much about Tuala, very little. So we, about two days later, uh, my wife was teaching, a uh, grade school teacher, and when school was done and I was off work, we drove to Tualatin and went out to Apache Bluff. They had an open house. We loved it, and two days later, we bought it. <laughs> so it was a quick, uh, a quick turn of events. Um, and you're still here. You live not not in that house, but we're in our third house now. Mm -hmm. Yes. That one right at the end of Shasta Trail and uh, Art Martinez's uh, field with cows was next to us and it's now Christmas trees. So we were right there and 
Dorothy Carson's barn is across the street. So a lot of history and where we um, we ended up. Um, and you, now your family, was it your father or your grandfather had a business in Portland? My grandfather started commercial ironworks and um, he passed away in 1938 driving back from Seaside. Well, the war was starting um, and Commercial Ironworks was uh, transitioning from just uh, ironworks into um, repairing and building ships. They ended up building over 250 naval warships uh, under the Ross Island Bridge. Uh, they had, and my dad, my uncle, the oldest brother was president of the company. My dad was vice president. And basically, my dad, from all I've been told, my dad ran the company. My uncle uh, would um, hobnob with all the admirals and uh, politicians and such, getting money and, and such. And my dad uh, was in charge of personnel and, and uh, operations. They had anywhere from 6,000 to 20,000 employees. Oh. <clears throat> They were going 24-7, 365, building ships. Um, and did you ever work there? Uh, I was born in 1945 uh, in September, so uh, the war ended a, a few months before that when uh, uh, Japan surrendered. So I never got, I never got down there to see that because I was just a baby and my dad didn't take me to his office. His office is still there, mm -hmm. right at the base of the- um, uh, The bridge? No, the, uh, I call it the flying beer can, the um, uh, tram, the tram <laughs> from uh, OHSU comes right down and is about uh, 100 yards from where my dad's office was, so. Uh, but they sold that, uh, business because there was it just construction came to a halt mm -hmm. and there's so many ships out there um, uh, Zydell bought it and they ended up using that to dismantle ships it was a uh, oh. they were breaking them apart there and for the steel oh. Oh. Um, Let's see. So you were so you were out in Tualatin, and you? No, at that time I lived out in uh, West Slope, oh. and then well, let's see, first ten years in West Slope, and then up in the West Hills uh, until I was got married, mm -hmm. and then lived in a few apartments when I was married, and moved to Tualatin. So most of my life has been out here, close to fifty years here in Tualatin. Oh my! God. Yeah. You've seen a lot of changes. Oh yes, there were no stop. Well, you you would remember this too. Mm -hmm. No traffic signals, mm -hmm. just stop signs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there were 976 people in town when we moved. Mm -hmm. There was a little sign. I should have taken a picture, but that number just sticks in my mind. So you um, so you left the real estate business at, at, after I did. I uh, left the real estate business. Um, and I said, well, what am I going to do? And uh, a new bank was opening. It was called Bank of Oregon, um, headquartered in Woodburn. And they built the building on Boone's Ferry Road where Key Bank is now. Mm -hmm. And that was our branch office. I was there for about two, three years. And I remember why I had quit First National to start with didn't like banking all that well. So mm -hmm. I moved on, looked for something to, to start. And uh, I had a good friend that was going, wanted to build a car wash. So he and I drove around looking at car washes. He said, well, we're gonna build an auto mall where there's different things going on and we need a quick loop. Why don't you start a quick loop? And I said, what's that? So we went over to a, I think, Jesse Loop in Milwaukee and went through that, got the oil chain. That's kind of neat. And it just progressed from that about 
oh, three months later, I was talking to Pennzoil and they said, well, we have a place we can train you. We'll send you, you just go to Pittsburgh, Oil City, and we have a class and we'll finance all your equipment and give you a list of all the things you need. And so I'm off and running. Mm -hmm. And um, so we built the oilery and I can't remember the exact day we opened it, but uh, uh, it's still standing. So I guess uh, we is, did pretty good. Is that right? Um, right by the railroad tracks. Tax, yes. yes. And the Katie car wash. Yes. Well, the Katie car wash was Rick Stebner's car wash. He, he opened that. Actually, I financed it when I was at the bank. And um, uh, he's since moved on to uh, Arizona. but. Uh, yeah, I did did a lot of work. I changed a lot of oil. I got dirty myself, not too much, but uh, had a lot of employees, a lot of employees. Um, one of my first employees uh, now runs Clark Lumber. Uh, Dave, I can't think his last name, it just popped in my mind, but uh, uh, so I, whenever I need lumber or anything like that, I go down to the new Clark Lumber. Where is the new one now? Is it on Tualatin Sherwood Road? No, it's on um, the extension. The yeah. 24th Street extension out in the. Yeah. Um, I can't. The new Tonkin Bay, Road. Salt, Bay Salt Creek area. Yeah, Tonkin Road. Mm -hmm. It's on Tonkin Road. Mm -hmm. When you come down Graham's Ferry, mm -hmm. the first turn is Tonkin. Okay. And he's off of that. Okay. Yeah, I, so I I grew up with Clark Lumber. <clears throat> I like to do a lot of things. So I was in there a lot and Dave was working there. He, he actually, he worked for me and then he went to work for um, Harvey Clark. And, mm -hmm. um, and then when, it, after it burned down, he uh, scrambled with the, um, with the family the Clark family and uh, they opened a new place, which is uh, it's sort of hidden, but it's just unbelievably well stocked and great place, great place. Wish it were back in closer to town. Oh, uh huh. But so um, let's see. I had the quick lube in the Boone's Ferry Auto Mall in Tualatin. Mm -hmm. uh, opened another one in Aloha a few days later. In 1999, I sold out to Jiffy Lube. Mm -hmm. uh, my corporate motto was changes for success, which included my employees, my customers, their cars, their attitudes towards uh, people working on cars in general. Um, I lived that model for many years and I still relate to it now. Hmm. I have twin granddaughters, nine-year-old granddaughters, and I sort of, <clears throat> you know, get them with, well, how are you going to do this better? How are you going to make a change for success? And they kind of look at me. And <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to keep that, that rolling. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so... Um... So did you retire then? Well, sort are of. You, I retired, retired from then? working for someone else or for myself. And uh, since then, I've been busier than ever before. Um, I, I look back and I, I was in retrospect, I was looking back and I, uh, my civic life was probably you know, based from my parents. My dad was very involved in Portland. During the war, they built ships in downtown Portland. Uh, um, uh, let's see, my, uh, after the war was over, um, he started a road construction company. And I, in high school, I did some work uh, out on the job with that. Um, but he was very involved elsewhere. He was a founding member of the University of Portland Board of Trustees, <clears throat> which ran the operation. He served for many years. He also on the board of St. Mary's Boys Home in Beaverton. 
mm -hmm. um, and the Portland Rose Festival. He was involved in that for many years and was a two-time president of the Rose Festival. Oh, really? The only one uh, to that date. Um, so the, pr pr I was a young teen when that happened, like 13, 14. I was like a freshman, sophomore in high school. And I'd go to these Rose Festival things with him and hear all these beautiful young ladies, the Court. court and I was just I went to <laughs> Jesuit high school which is a uh, boys school so it was a little uh, a little offsetting yeah it was distracting <laughs> yes very much but um, so uh, you were inspired or motivated oh yeah 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 um, volunteer work yeah he was he was always doing one thing or another helping people out you know uh, I've heard many stories of uh, uh, people that he helped uh, set up in business, uh, our insurance agent. He gave him a desk and a file cabinet and a phone and a place to start selling insurance. And he became a very successful insurance man. And uh, um, so anyway, you... my, my mom, too, she, during World War II, she was a nurse assistant in Portland, you know, with a little... Red Cross cap and all that, and um, she volunteered at church and Cub Scouts, and um, and she support every charity that sent her some. She'd send money to them. I mean, it was just a uh, you know five dollars or ten dollars mm -hmm. or whatever, but she always supported uh, everything. I see the mail that I get now, and I just can't believe all the all the people with their hands out, mm -hmm. but she, yeah. she'd support them all. Mm -hmm. I guess I followed in their footsteps. Yes. And so where did you start in Tualatin in, in terms of your, your civic involvement? Um, I was at our house in, on Shasta Trail and a fellow knocked on the door one day and said, we're starting a, a group called the JCs here. And would you be interested in helping us start one in Tuala? And I said, sure, well, tell me about it. Well, young men, 18 to 35, uh, mm -hmm. civic uh, organization and such. So I said, sure, I'll do that. Well, I became the charter president. <laughs> so I, I ran the thing. And uh, I, I can't remember how old I was at the time, but... Uh, JC's was for 18 to 35. Mm -hmm. And so we did all sorts of things. We did um, uh, crawfish festival. We did uh, Christmas trees. We did uh, giving baskets to uh, the needy. We'd get a hold of the school nurses and say, okay, which kids are not going to have a very happy Christmas? And mm -hmm. we'd uh, take uh, food and, and uh, quite often take the oldest kid in the family and go shopping with them and buy uh, stuff for the rest of the kids mm -hmm. you know, so they'd have something under the tree, bring a tree. Mm -hmm. It was great fun. We did that for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then you were involved with the Lions. Right. Well, after most of our JCs turned 35 or 36 and it was supposed to be for 18 to 35, so mm -hmm. we looked around and I think Larry McClure was in the Lions Club. He says, well, you guys don't need to come over and uh, with us. So we, uh, I think there were eight or 10 of us that joined the Twilight and Lions Club. And I've been in that ever since. Been president a couple of times. And, um, and you mentioned uh, one of the most rewarding experiences you had volunteering was with, I think it was with the Lions. And, and um, providing eye. Um, oh, yes. Check -ups. Uh, I, sight and hearing is, is the main focus of Lions International. Uh, Lions International is the largest civic group in the world and mm -hmm. has uh, like 1.4 million members, thousands of uh, clubs all over the world. And uh, uh, they were founded uh, and 
given marching orders by, oh, <laughs> I can't, the blind lady that, uh, so. Helen Keller? Helen Keller. She <laughs> gave lions their marching orders. Uh -huh. So that's, that's where the sight and hearing went. But the thing that I loved the most is that for many years, we did um, sight and hearing testing with all the grade school kids here in Tuala. Mm -hmm. We had a van, um, we'd go to the schools, they put on the little ear things and, and, and that, and then we'd uh, have them look at the, you know, ease, you know, mm -hmm. which ways and such. Mm -hmm. And it's progressed from there. We're not doing the hearing as much now because there's other facilities that will do that. But we have a gadget that looks like a Polaroid camera and we, the child sits on the other side of a table and they look into this thing and there's little flashing lights, little colored flashing lights. This takes a picture of the eye, of the in, inner eye oh. and can tell if there's, tell what the um, correction is. If they're 2020, mm -hmm. we had one that was 2200. 2100 is legally uh, blind mm -hmm. and they had no idea. Oh. And um, another thing that we do is we just did recently, we hand out uh, American flags on a little base about this tall, mm -hmm. little wooden base that we make. Mm -hmm. And we hand them out to all first graders. Mm -hmm. We did that about two weeks ago. Well, a week ago, with just before Flag Day, just before they mm -hmm. um, ended their school year. And it is so much fun to see those little first graders, mm -hmm. you know, wa waving their flags and sitting and listening to our things. I have a, a shirt that I wear that's a flag. So I'm the flag guy. I come in and uh, it's great fun, but uh, we've been doing that. I don't know how many years. Uh, I'd say we've probably uh, distributed 10, 15,000 flags. Oh. And then other Lions Clubs around the state, some do, some don't, but uh, we, uh, it's, it's always fun to do that. And I, uh, when my, Granddaughter, I have beautiful twin granddaughters that go to Byron School. Oh, oh they're here. Yes, well, they live in Sherwood, but our daughter went to Byron and she wanted them to go to school here and we're close to the school, so we watch them after school. Oh, nice. But um, uh, they didn't, uh, they were online for their first grade. Oh, they were uh, with COVID, yeah. so they, we, couldn't hand them out. Well, when they got into second grade, um, we could go in and hand out the flag. So we got to hand out first and second grade. Now, remember, giving them to my granddaughters it was great fun. You were also on the architectural review board here. I um, was, yes. And what what does that mean? What did you do? Well, at that time, it was um, a group of. Uh, professionals. There was an architect, a landscape architect, a designer, uh, a couple other people, and some uh, just citizens. <clears throat> and we'd look at the plans, and we'd sit down with the city staff and the the uh, person that wanted to develop the property and make suggestions. <clears throat> and I thought it went quite well because. Uh, we made a lot of changes that, uh, uh, well, uh, I can't remember any in particular, but uh, uh, it would have been pretty bad if they built some of the uh, buildings that they wanted to build. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's since progressed into uh, the city reviews it if the uh, applicant who's going to build a building doesn't like what the city says, then they go to a, a board. So it's uh, only if the, they don't agree with the city. Okay. But they usually. Uh, yeah. The city, um, 
Well, I won't get into that. I think the city needs some changes on uh, architecture and planning and such, um, but that's a completely different story. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and the Wetlands Conservancy, you you helped start that. I did. <clears throat> Althea Pratt Room called me one day, and I met her a couple of times. And she says, "We're gonna uh, we have some wetlands around here. We're trying to protect them. Would you be interested in joining us? We need a treasurer." At that time, I was working at that uh, Bank of Oregon. Mm -hmm. Sure. So we had meetings in her house. She'd always have tea for us oh, and such. Okay. And I don't know if you, you've been in the house, I'm yes. sure. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Ross, you, 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 someday, hopefully you will. It's a beautiful, uh, yeah. original I've house. I've seen the video. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we had our meetings there, and Jack and uh, a lot of others, uh, we all got involved. And I stayed with it for 37 years. Oh, you did? Yeah, I finally, uh, it had grown and it had moved downtown Portland uh, for their headquarters. It was here in Tualatin for many years. Uh, yeah. For a number of years, it was over at the, the old uh, um, Browns Ferry Park. Okay. Um, the, oh, house, the house there. Was this way in the back? Right? Yeah, yeah. Park. They were upstairs. Yeah. Oh. And so and lots of I've been in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was it was. Uh, I think we did a lot of good. It's now uh, uh, known nationwide, if not worldwide. Yeah, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Um, the I was reading. Um, I saw an old newspaper, a Tualatin paper from 1977 recently, and one of the articles mentioned that there was no library in Tualatin. I think there was a little house. But actually, there was park. a bus. We had a uh, a um, mobile bus that would park in the Kmart parking lot, and that was and that was the, the that library. was the library, right? And and that surprised me as recent. I mean, I think of it as recent in the late 1970s. Yeah. So yeah. you you helped. Well, um, with the foundation, the library. Foundation. Well, the foundation didn't start till many years later. Uh, okay. They they had a um, library group, uh, but they wanted a separate foundation. So that's when I got involved. I was on that board because I I've set up so many different things like that. I, they wanted me to help with that. So they got it started and I probably was on it for a year, year and a half. And then I felt that my skills weren't really needed that much. I let the the uh, library people take over from there. Mm -hmm. And I had sort of a special interest because my wife was a librarian. Uh, she worked her way through college uh, work in Beaverton Library, and oh, cool. um, then she taught for oh goodness, forty some years. Oh, oh. Uh, grade school. So, um, and uh, and the crawfish festival you were involved. With that. Oh yes. And that is that that's over with. There will be. I no hope more. not, but I kind of think it is. That they've. Tiger has re resurrected the balloon festival. Uh -huh. uh, they stopped it for COVID, and some other places have stopped there, and they are bringing them back. But um, I think Tualatin is so diverse right now, and people don't have the history of the crawfish festival mm -hmm. firmly in mind. Um, and the festival started as just a uh, a generator for money for the nonprofits originally started the VFW. Uh -huh. They sold crawfish out of the the uh, Quonset hut. They oh, were there uh year the VFW. Quonset. Yeah. Yeah. And and I remember it as a child growing up here, um, the crawfish festival seemed like just a community potluck. It, it was. was like maybe 150 people would be there and you knew everybody. I, I remember it when it was Maybe a little bit larger than that, but not much. I remember going down 
we get the crawfish in from uh, Lake Billy Chinook up in Central Oregon, and they bring these cages about three foot square and two foot deep full of crawfish live. And we'd sit there in the park and we'd clean them. There's three parts to the tail and you take the middle part and you turn it and pull it and that's the mud vein. And so we, uh, we cleaned thousands and thousands of crawfish. Oh. And then we put them in five gallon jugs and fill them with water and take them down to the thriftway store and freeze them in the back room. So that's we do this before the crawfish festival, and um, yeah, I've I've cleaned so many crawfish, it's amazing. But uh, it must and have been the, hard on the hands. Uh, no, well, you shells. get used to it, and you you get used to how to how to pick a crawfish up so they don't get you. Because some people would be yelling and throwing <laughs> throwing them across the. the uh, Across the street, almost, you know, when they grab onto them. So, yeah, lot, lots of things happened to the crawfish festival. But, uh, oh, uh, we had, well, you remember we had a motorcycle gang in town, uh -huh. Brother Speed, uh -huh. uh, right where um, I think Avery comes into Toilet Sherwood Road. There's all those beautiful buildings, but there's a little road that went back to a house, and that was their headquarters. Oh. And they were a true um gang biker gang uh right there with um the the worst of them the uh, oh, brother you. speed was the name of it brother oh. speed and they but, didn't they hang out a lot at the it was the spot tavern but it was the spot the CI. yeah and but, when we first moved here uh we signed the papers and then we moved and I guess it was just at that time is when they had a knife. Uh, somebody killed another guy with a knife in the spot. Oh, dear. And that changed to the CI, the country end. They, ne they never found I don't the murderer. Know. I don't know. <laughs> but um, uh, Yvonne Addington, one day she, she was upset with something about him. And she told him, you do not do bad things in our town or you'll, <laughs> you'll have the rage of everybody. So they were pretty good around here. They'd come to the crawfish festival and park their bikes on the far corner of the baseball diamond while oh. everything else was going on near the picnic area. And they'd bring their own keg and they'd um, uh, have a great time, never bother anybody. One year, um, one of the Kiwanis or something like that. They had left their uh, refrigerated trailer there overnight the night before, and somebody broke into it and stole hot dogs and hamburgers. And so the guys with the um, bikers, they said, really? Let's see if we can find them. So they went out in the woods and they found the kids that did it and beat them up pretty good and brought all the stuff back and gave it back to the uh, <laughs> Kiwanis. The Kiwanis, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you wouldn't have expected it from them, and they, uh, they, the only time they may have caused problems, there was one year where it was very hot, and they had a band that was country western, well, we were supposed to go to eight o'clock and then turn things off, mm -hmm. well, at eight o'clock, they turned the volume up and went to rock and roll and, you know, hard head banging stuff. And there was a lot of um, construction workers because they were building a lot of houses at the time. And there were a few fist fights and such. And so um, I'm not slapping my own back, but I said, this has got to stop. And Yvonne was going, what are we going to do? And I walked behind the <clears throat> trailer that they had there and I pulled the plug <laughs> and rolled up the extension cord <laughs> and took it away and there was no sound that had to go home. <laughs> and you lived to tell about it. I lived yeah. to tell about it. Yeah, I just did it as quietly as I possibly could. So um, so yeah. recently you've been um, you were involved with the Veterans Memorial. Right, I'm not a veteran, but um, the history with my dad's 
company, I've been involved in it. And uh, um, I don't think the city's going the right direction right now, but- uh, um, With the design? The design, the yeah. Um, when you get consultants involved, they have their own ideas that may not uh, mix with the, uh, what we presented to start with. So mm -hmm. it ain't over on that, I don't okay. think, but uh, it, it can be a wonderful place. Mm -hmm. um, they, the city, I don't know, it's the city or the consultants, they said, well, instead of a veterans memorial, we're gonna have it as a veterans plaza. And we mm -hmm. said, well, what is that? Well, it's a better term than memorial. Well, no, we want a memorial. Mm -hmm. uh, this is in memory of the people that served. Mm -hmm. So that's still going around. And then um, we finally got a flag. They didn't want to put a flag up on their original plan, American flag or anything. So they have one American flag. And our idea was let's have flags of the <clears throat> Army, Navy, Coast Guard, Marines, uh, Space Force, have those. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a little something about each one of them, because the people who fought or served, they are either you know one of these particular things. They can they can <clears throat> uh, connect with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, and then uh, Joe Lipscomb, who I don't know if you know Joe, he's uh, the name. He's a ex marine from Korea. He's in his late 80s right now and just as feisty as as he was in Korea. <laughs> um, he wants something to be said about the women who served, mm -hmm. lots of women. There are no uh, memorials for women in Oregon. Mm -hmm. There's only like six in the country. Mm -hmm. This would be a perfect mm -hmm. thing to bring people in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, there were at least two or three women um, from Tualatin who served during World War II. Yeah. In the wax or the. Yeah. And the uh, a lot of people, uh, actually, I've talked to a couple of people that work at Commercial Ironworks. They <clears throat> take the bus from Tualatin down to under the Ross mm -hmm. Island Bridge and they work mm -hmm. there building mm -hmm. ships. So there were a lot of people involved in the war. Yeah. And then um, war dogs, there's no, no one represents them as a memorial. And there was one other I can't remember right now, but uh, um, mm -hmm. we want to make it all inclusive. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way they have planned, they could not have the Memorial Day gathering there because it wouldn't hold the people. They have a reflection pool. Well, you've got the lake there. Let that be the reflection pool. Yeah. But they take up a whole bunch of space on, you mm -hmm. know, a reflection pool. And, mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it ain't over on the planning. I hope it <clears throat> changes a lot okay. between now and then. Um, I, you've really been involved in your community. Yeah, that's, I, that's just ways. me. Yeah, it's amazing. <clears throat> yeah, um, I'm, uh, I'm president of my CIO. I'm a certain uh, member, which is Community Emergency Response Team, okay. as is my wife. Um, and that's um, IBAC, the IBAC. IBAC, CIO. We're trying to rebuild that, but uh, um, I think it's a good thing. Very good. The certs. Um, I wrote, I can't count the meetings, surveys, gatherings that have attended in Tualatin over the years. Um, and I wouldn't be doing any of this if it weren't for my wife. <clears throat> she says, go do your thing. She's she's a lion. Uh, she helps me on some things and some things she sits and reads a book and such, but <clears throat> uh, she and my, my kids, <clears throat> My daughter lives in Sherwood, my son in Tiger. Oh, and nice. uh, we have twin granddaughters that we've watched mm -hmm. since birth because oh. our daughter worked for the state of Oregon. Um, and as, uh, as an attorney, she was the chief prosecutor for Boley. 
<clears throat> and then one of the law firms that uh, would uh, represent uh, employers came to her one day and said, we'd like you to work for us. Well, I don't know. Well, every one of our people have lost to you in court. So we want you on our side. <laughs> so she's now working for, um, uh, uh, well, it's a national law firm, but uh, with an office here in Portland. Mm -hmm. She just loves it. But she's busy, busy, busy. Yeah. Our son is busy. He works now, our son-in-law, he works at the um, uh, Pipe and Steam Fitters uh, Labor Union. He works there uh, mm -hmm. and actually has to go for a week and a half to a conference back in Michigan. He says, mm -hmm. please, any, any, any place but Michigan. <laughs> he doesn't want to go back to Michigan. <clears throat> yeah, I know. I'm Whatever. But uh, our uh, daughters, we've watched them basically since they were about six weeks old. Oh. And uh, they're at our house great. right now. Uh -huh. They're uh, they're just a, amazing. One is a, uh, going into gymnastics, and she's just mm -hmm. she's they're like this. They're not, you know, you couldn't tell you couldn't even tell their sisters. Well, one's like this, and one's here, and mm -hmm. she's skinny as a toothpick. She's just tiny, mm -hmm. but she can do things. Uh, in gymnastics, She's the that, gymnast. Oh yeah, yeah. So oh. I don't think she'll go on from there. But uh, she, I say, what are you doing? She says, I'm stretching, and her legs are going <laughs> out like this each way. And I said, don't do that until you warm up. And she, she oh. and she'll sit there with a leg up in the one leg up in the air and one down. <laughs> I'm just stretching. Oh. Change for success. Yes, yes, yes. So. Well, They're the, I have a wonderful family and, you know, I've got so many friends here in Tuala. Well, I just love the place. Yeah. I don't like the traffic anymore. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but things can change. That's right. Things can change. Yeah. That's right. I'll be banging my hand on the desk Good. probably pretty soon. Go to some city council meetings. Good. Such. Well, so. Well, I can't think of any more questions. You, uh, gosh, you've been you've had a busy life. I that I have having a busy life. So. Yeah, it's hard to keep a track of all the things. I'm my calendar is just normally full. Uh -huh. More full than when I had my business. I go to work, <laughs> I do my thing, and I come home, and that was about it. And now I've got. Yeah. meetings and uh, lots of things to do. Well, to the benefit of your community. Well, I, I love Tuala. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's uh, the, the, what did Lou Ogden used to say? The uh, uh, best little city west of the Mississippi or something like that. It, that was sort knew, of his I knew, tag. I don't remember that. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much, Ed. Well, you're very for giving your time and coming here and and telling us some of your stories, your experiences. And, uh, uh, some of them popped out that I hadn't written down. So well, good, <laughs> good. So um, yeah. So um, we're going to. This will be available. This will be in our archives. Okay. And. Uh, and available for you know people who want to research Tualatin. Okay. And, uh, and thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs>